In this video, we're gonna be talking about melatonin and how melatonin interacts with cancer in a really unique way. Let's dive into it. All right, uh, so we're talking melatonin. First off, I am not a doctor. Anything you hear here uh, should not be taken as specific medical advice for your situation. You should always talk with your doctor, your team of doctors, hopefully, who have a varied set of experiences and input to help you make the best decision for your health. In this video, we're going to be talking about the science of melatonin, like kind of what it is and how it works. We're going to talk about its application in cancer and more recent research that has come out. Um, and then just some final considerations when thinking about melatonin in your cancer fighting journey. So first, let's get into the science of melatonin. Talking the science, kind of what it is and how it works. So what is melatonin and how does it work? Melatonin is a hormone that your brain produces in response to darkness, okay? It helps with the timing of your circadian rhythm. That's your, your internal clock that kind of understands um, that a day is 24 hours and, uh, and helps you kind of regulate yourself based on that. Um, it also helps with the deepness of your sleep. So melatonin uh, is, is a substance or, or a compound released by your pineal gland. It's like kind of right in the center of your, of your brain, right above your brain stem. Unlike the adrenal gland, for, for example, where adrenaline comes from, the pineal gland has no, uh, I'll call it response feedback. So what that means is that um, like if you drink a bunch of coffee that has an effect on your adrenal gland, eventually your, your adrenaline response is deadened. That's why if you drink too much coffee, you stop feeling the effect of it, you start feeling tired when you don't have it, and then you have to kind of reset your body. That's the process of essentially exhausting your adrenal gland. So for melatonin, what's different is there isn't a response feedback. So if you take melatonin as a supplement, for example, that doesn't have any documented effect on your body's natural function of producing melatonin itself. So you can take it um, and it doesn't slow down your body. It's not like if you take melatonin too often, all of a sudden your body won't produce melatonin anymore and now you're, you're addicted to it. Um, that's just not how the pineal gland works. Um, that's something we've, we've heard quite a bit is that seems to be the case. Again, talking with our doctors and looking research uh, doesn't seem to be the case. All right, so uh, melatonin regulates the sleep and awake cycle. Um, it, it regulates some seasonal rhythms. Essentially, it's what activates our body's wind down mode. Um, and so naturally, we would have a response that in the in the winter as it gets dark earlier we're going to bed earlier we're waking earlier that that kind of natural rhythm is really regulated by melatonin um, it also acts as uh, what's called an immunostimulator um, and cytoprotective agent so essentially it just uh, is something that helps stimulate our immune system right immunostimulator um, and cytoprotective uh, agent so it helps protect the integrity of our cells. So um, a few other kind of key points about melatonin um, is that our white blood cells uh, actually have, so our white blood cells, our, our immune system cells, have melatonin receptors. Yeah, this was, this was discovered recently. That's super interesting. Um, and so this, this at least suggests, according to some research, that melatonin affects their function, white blood cell function, in some way. Um, in particular, melatonin appears to stimulate the release of something called cytokines and other proteins that help attack an invading effect, infection. So this is why, like, if you're if you're run down and you're not sleeping very often, um, you seem to get sick more often. You seem to to have a lower immune response when you do get sick, meaning it affects you harder and longer. And the, and what your doctor has told you for decades, centuries, is get some really good sleep. Um, we're learning what that means and how that actually plays into uh, 
into your health from a melatonin standpoint. So at the same time, the second bullet here, melatonin acts as a powerful anti-inflammatory, uh, helping to prevent or reverse some of the damage that occurs when the immune system attacks our own tissue. So inflammation is a, is a response of your immune system coming to the rescue, and that can uh, cause problems sometimes if that response is too strong. Uh, it does appear that melatonin has this um, rubber band effect of increasing your immune response when you need it, but also holding it back when, uh, when you're healthy and, and allowing you to recover quicker. So these two sides of melatonin really seem to act as bumper rails for our immune system, both, uh, both of which are regulated in part, at least it seems, by melatonin because of those receptors that are on those white blood cells. So there's also, this third bullet, a significant link between melatonin levels and the incidence of cancer. So people who work night shifts or otherwise are deprived of melatonin over a long period of time are at significantly higher risk of cancer occurrence um, and specifically certain types of cancer. This indicates a link potentially uh, to the immune system because cancer has been found to require that your body overlook um, the development of cancer, right? We all have cancer cells floating through our body. It's just a natural process um, of our immune system, attacking those cells, taking care of them, moving on. When cancer, what we call cancer, develops, our immune system has been blinded to that cancer in some way. That blinding of our immune system has been tied to sleep patterns, quality of sleep, and ultimately melatonin being the driver of that. Okay, so that's science of melatonin, how it works, where it comes from. Um, let's talk about some more specific applications in cancer. So I've got a few quotes here from uh, Sloan Kettering. And I think that's just Im important to say where it's coming from because Sloan Kettering isn't a, isn't a, a mommy blog talking about what they learned uh, in, in application of their own experience, right? It's not uh, sloankettering.blogspot.com. There, there's some credibility behind um, organizations like this. When they, when they uh, write about results, um, there's a little bit more backing that that we can lean into. You always want to double check and, and check their facts, but um, it, does, it does give some weight. And so what they uh, say about melatonin is that it's used to treat insomnia, right? That one makes sense, having trouble sleeping. It's likely something with your circadian rhythm being off. So taking melatonin can assist in getting you back on a healthy rhythm. Um, it also helps treat the side effects of chemotherapy, such as low platelet counts, weakness, and depression. So it, again, um, melatonin has that effect of protecting the integrity of our cells. And so chemotherapy destroys the integrity of our cells. Melatonin can help in counteracting that. Uh, it also keeps our blood counts from getting too low due to radiation. Um, it helps treat seasonal affective disorder, right? As the days get shorter and darkness comes in, um, melatonin can help adjust our circadian rhythm in that way. Um, and it has also been found to treat migraines. So here's just a, a quote, again, from Sloan Kettering. Um, Melatonin demonstrated antioxidant and anti-proliferative properties. Just means that it slows the growth and doubling of cells that happen in, in a cancer tumor, including against breast cancer cells in particular is what they were looking at. And it also has a synergistic effect with anti-cancer agents. So other chemotherapies and things. It works well with those. It also has this protective effect against cardiotoxicity uh, in specific studies that Sloan Kettering was looking at. Um, so I say all that to say melatonin is not solely in the realm of what some might call pseudoscience or others might call naturopathy. Um, that it, melatonin really strides in the middle. That it, it is validated by both the medical community and the natural community as being a benefit. Right, so this is why, this is one that we're talking about, is uh, wherever you fall, whoever you're talking to, they should be able to talk about the benefits of melatonin in your journey. All right, so let's just talk about a few final considerations as we wrap up this video. 
you should, if you haven't already, be talking with your doctor about specifically, is melatonin supplementation right for me? And if not, why not? So, so challenge them. Um, if they say no, uh, there very well could be good reasons. But don't just take their word for it. Ask for those reasons. Understand what they're recommending and why. Uh, and then also ask them, what dose should I consider? So if, if yes to melatonin, um, there has been some value shown in really high doses of melatonin, far higher than you would take just for sleep. And the, the benefit that that has in, in helping rejuvenate your cells through sleep, uh, that can be really powerful. So Rachel, for example, takes between 20 and 60 milligrams uh, on any given night um, and has found that to be effective. So again, that's anecdotal, but that's the conversation you should be having with your doctor. All right, and that's it about melatonin, at least for today. Um, there's a lot that we could talk about, uh, but please let us know if you have any questions. Otherwise, we'll talk to you soon.